Good morning, people. Good morning, everyone. As you start to come in on this Friday morning in Sydney, I hope it's Friday. I think it's Friday wherever you are in the world. If you could grab a coffee, take a seat, turn off the uh, turn off the phone if you possibly can. Maybe lock up the kids. I don't know, not physically, but you know what I mean. Some, somehow, metaphorically, and uh, and and grab a coffee. If you could, in the chat room, just tell us where you are in the world, where you're from, and tell us, uh, yeah, give us your name and where you're coming from. We're in, I'm in Sydney, and Lars, you're in? Uh, I'm in uh, Northern Virginia, in Herndon, in Northern the US. Virginia. Yep. Fantastic. Lisa from Sydney, that's the first person from Sydney. Another Sydney, another Sydney. It's a gorgeous day in Sydney, the blue skies are out. First Melbourne, beautiful day here too, wonderful Angela. Sydney's very popular. So folks, what we're gonna do before I hand over to Lars is just introduce who we are. My name is, uh, for those of you who don't know me, Ian Collier. I look after the TechFest portfolio with Hanover Affairs. Um, over the last, I think, five weeks now, we've been putting together a series of webinars that are looking to take us on this journey, which is um, certainly up and down, I think, for many of us, but it's, we're on, on this journey with you and obviously hoping to, uh, to add some value and tips and tricks and, and information that will help you on this journey. Um, if you have any questions or, so, or thoughts or um, suggestions around speakers or sessions you'd like to see, we'd love to hear from them, so please get in touch with me. Um, but today we're over the moon that Lars has joined us from Virginia. Uh, it's wonderful to have these international speakers who were able to join us uh, virtually. It'd be better if he was here physically, but it's second best, so we're so pleased. And uh, He's got a wonderful, ba wonderful background of skateboards there, so that I think it's a, it's, he's definitely one of the best uh, film set so far of the series. Um, we've got Lars Schmidt, who is the founder of Amplify. If you were with us in November last year in Sydney, you'll see his keynote sessions and he was, I think he was one of our best speakers and one of our top three or four speakers. So you're in for a real treat. He's going to be able to show you some of his learnings from the last six weeks. And um, yeah, basically uh, what I will do right now without further ado is hand over to you, Lars. Welcome. Yeah. Well, Ian, thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for all of you for uh, tuning in and joining us. Uh, your morning, my uh, evening on Thursday, so I'm, uh, I'm speaking to you from the past, apparently. Um, so I wanted to, you know, one, just kind of walk you through just a quick background. I've been in this space for about uh, a little over 20 years. Uh, most of that has been in recruiting, talent management, HR, employer branding, uh, all of that. Um, I host a podcast called 21st Century HR, write for uh, Fast Company, I uh, wrote a book on employer branding, and, and I, I'm telling you all that not to say, like, look at this great bio I have, but more so um, because of all that work, I've been able to build a really broad global network of HR executives and people leaders, um, and that's something that I've been leaning on heavily over the last, um, you know, really two months since late February uh, as, uh, you know, COVID began working its way, uh, you know, from APAC through Europe and then now to the U.S. and obviously uh, global. So um, but what I want to share just some stories with all of you and more importantly, some resources are around uh, open source resources, around organizational readiness. Uh, but really the most important story to me is the lots of examples of how the field of HR and people operations has come together to open up their playbooks to, to help each other through uh, really an unprecedented global event that uh, none of us have faced before. So um, I've had a really interesting uh, front row seat to all of that. And so I want to share how that evolved for all of you. But I also want to share um, some of the resources that are uh, available right now to all of you if you're in an in-house role and you're making plans for your organization. So um, I do want to make this interactive. Uh, I don't want to just uh, be speaking at you for 30 minutes. So if you have questions at any point during the webinar, uh, go ahead and ask them in the chat window. I'm going to uh, be a bad host and occasionally look away from the camera so I can look down at the chat window just to see if there's any questions there. Um, and you can also add them in the Q&A window as well uh, if you prefer. So whichever one of those is easier for you. Uh, and I think the volume should be fine. Then I'll be able to get to those. So um, with that, let me kind of open things up. And I'm going to do a quick share screen because what I want to be doing during this is to walk you through uh, some of the resources and I'll share some of the links in the chat window as well uh, so you can access these. So bear with me one second.
Okay, so what you're looking at right now seems like just a basic blog post. Um, but actually, this is, uh, you know, I can't, it's not even dramatic for me to say, it's kind of the start of a revolution. Um, in the US, uh, there's a company called Coinbase. They are a Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency company based in San Francisco with global operations. Um, right around probably mid-February, uh, I started seeing uh, in some of my chief people officer networks that I'm in, um, the conversation around COVID start to escalate, uh, right? People started talking about, um, you know, how is this going to unfold? Uh, what are we working on? How is this going to impact our business? Uh, there is a collective consciousness around, uh, you know, COVID and the impact it may have. Coinbase, uh, right around that time, this is probably mid-February, um, they created what I think was probably one of the first COVID-specific um, disaster preparedness plans. And then they open sourced it. So they, they developed it internally. Their um, uh, chief information security officer, their CISO is the one who created it. Uh, then they decided to open it up and make it publicly available. And so this started getting shared in my network. Uh, and I saw that and that was huge. And so um, from there, uh, I knew as I was watching this unfold globally over the previous couple of weeks, um, that we were soon going to find ourselves in a situation where as a global community of HR and people practitioners um, facing something we've never faced before and having to take our businesses in directions they've never gone before, whether it's shifting to remote work, canceling travel at scale, uh, doing these things that you know, ultimately when it hit seemed to kind of happen overnight. Um, so the next piece I did from here is I took the Coinbase document, um, I crowdsourced through my community hey, what are some resources around things that are going to be facing HR practitioners? Things like shifting to remote work, um, things like figuring out how you change travel plans, uh, you know, and cancel those down. How, how do you think about um, how do you develop the, the tools and the system and the infrastructure necessary to ensure business continuity uh, in this kind of an environment? And so I took all of that and I wrote this. So this was a, a Fast Company article that got published uh, you know, right at the end of February um, that basically uh, was a collection of curated uh, resources and tools, both including the Coinbase document, um, because at that time, that was the only uh, open source pandemic planning doc, uh, and then a variety of other resources. So again, I'll, I'll include all these links in the chat window at the end of the webinar. Uh, but this just gets into, um, again, Coinbase's plans, how companies are going about reevaluating remote work, um, you know, limiting travel. This was the early days of COVID when, you know, not everybody travel wasn't locked down globally. So companies were still trying to figure, do we, you know, do we cancel that event? Um, do we cut business travel? How do we, how do we adapt and respond to this? Um, and so this got published and I think it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a valuable resource um, but as those of you who are practitioners, just quickly in the chat window, how many of you are, are in in-house people operations or HR roles right now? Uh, you can just give me a yes, a no, or a Y, or an N. We'll go shorthand. Uh, but I just want to get a quick gauge from the audience. Uh, how many of you are actually in in-house roles right now? Okay. Kim, Ashley, yep. Uh, Lynette, you know. Andrew, yes. So as I expected, okay, Angela, thank you for that. Hopefully you're able to uh, find something on the other side of this very quickly. Um, so I think we've got you know, more, more yes than no, um, but you know, the role that you're in, it's an understatement to say, it's incredibly difficult, especially now. The role, HR practitioner roles are, are hard to begin with, right? They were difficult prior to COVID. They're much more difficult now. Um, just the scope, the complexity, the stakes, uh, everything has been elevated substantially. And so um, what I quickly realized after this document went out was that uh, within about three days, it was dated. And that's how fast things were moving. Again, this is, uh, you know, I, I don't know at what point in time, um, you know, the, the real big wave of COVID hitting business hit in Australia, but for us, it was in early March. Uh, I believe it was the second week in March. And so, uh, so what I did from here is I said, okay, a, a static uh, blog document, a blog, you know, post, even in Fast Company, is not going to be able to keep up with the way things are unfolding, the pace at which things are unfolding. And so um, one of the things that I've also done in my past, I've always been a huge proponent of open source practices, 
uh, in general, but certainly in HR. Um, I co-founded an initiative called HR Open Source, which you know scaled to a global community of over 8,000 practitioners in over 100 countries, all working together to accelerate innovation in HR. So I've seen the power of open source. Um, so what I decided to do is to take uh, that Coinbase document, some of the other documents in the Fast Company article, and package them in a crowdsourced open source Google Doc. Um, my intent in creating that initially was to say, okay, look, everybody's going through this. Nobody has any idea what the hell they're doing. Um, you know, maybe you're lucky to have some level of a pandemic plan if you work for a big company, but for most of you in small to medium sized businesses, you have nothing, you've never experienced anything remotely like this, and you have no idea where to go or what to do. Um, and that's terrifying. And so uh, my view was if we can create an open source resource and a platform where those people especially could see what their peers are doing, because again, because this was such an unprecedented global event, there was no remote, like remotely close playbook to how people needed to help their, you know, guide their organizations through this. And so from there, you know, the next document that were created, um, you know, this then became kind of the hub of all things uh, COVID and HR um, virally. So it wasn't my intent by any means when I created this, um, but I wanted to build a guide where essentially um, people who were building their organization's COVID response guides could leverage the Coinbase document. Um, they could build something similar like that. I mean, it's very much the same as open source software. In open source software, you write a piece of code, you upload it to a repository, and anybody can take that code. That, you know, you have a code that executes Y thing. Anybody can take that code. They can replicate it. Um, it's free. They can, uh, you know, ideally the, the theory is if you take it, you make it faster, you make it more efficient, then you upload your version back in the repository. Now there's a better version there that everybody can access for free. Um, and so that's what's accelerated innovation in the field of HR. And so I think you've seen that happen here. So the cool thing, and I just want to show you a couple sections here that I think are noteworthy. Um, so this is really where it all started, you know, the coronavirus response plans. And uh, again, Coinbase was the first document um, to go and open source their platform and their plans. Um, but you can see here, you know, there's over 15 companies, probably closer to 20 companies who all followed their lead. And many of them specifically took Coinbase's document, they tweaked it, localized it for their own organization, their own location, their own business, you know, wherever they were, uh, and they built their own version, and then they open sourced their version. So as this library continued to build and grow, it allowed HR and people practitioners um, to be able to quickly say, you know, their CEOs are saying, you know, putting a lot of pressure on them, hey, what are, you know, what are their companies doing? How are they responding? Now people had a place to go and share and pull data and pull information and pull tangible specific examples of how companies are responding to COVID uh, and then using those to guide their own practices. So, um, you know, it was amazing to see this unfold. I think over the first two weeks this was out, um, it got shared uh, and updated over 10,000 times um, and, uh, and it went around the world. And so I think that it was, to me, th this was, you know, I've been in open source and HR for a long time. This was kind of that turning point where I think, you know, people who got open source before, they got it, you didn't need to sell them. There's probably a lot of people in HR who still work in silos, um, who still really aren't accustomed to opening their playbook and sharing. Now they're seeing something like this, and now are they seeing it, they're using it to build their own programs. Well, now that's fundamentally changed how they viewed, you know, data and practices and whether they need to be proprietary or they can be open. Um, how many of you who are in-house right now are, are starting to work on your return to work plans? Um, you know, here in the US, and I know uh, in Europe, they're calling them RTW, return to work. I don't know if they're using that same phrase uh, in Australia, but just curious in the chat window, uh, anybody who's currently developing return to work plans, um, uh, just go ahead and pop in there and let me know. Recovery plans, okay. Um, and for those of you that are, how many of you are finding resources to help you do that, um, to help you think through uh, just all the complexities and nuances. So kind of a, a part two of that question, I'd say. Okay. And depending on where you are um, in that process, and uh, you know, certainly if you're still looking for guidance and resources, it seems like a lot of you are well underway, 
Um, this next section I'm going to walk you through is really um, this evolution of the Google Doc. So where the Google Doc started uh, as a platform for these initial plans, you know, we're past that phase of COVID now. Now, you know, we, we, we're all, for those of us that have the privilege of being able to work from home, we've made that adjustment. Um, you know, companies are now starting to think about how they're going to open back up and how can they do that in a safe way. Uh, and so a very similar thing that happened on those plans actually happened on the return to work section. Um, so this document here, uh, this return to work scenarios and options, this was what started this whole section. So I'm in a couple different CPO networks. And then one of them, um, the CHRO of Eventbrite shared a, uh, a Google Doc that his general counsel had given him. Uh, and it was a Google Doc that uh, there were, you know, uh, dozens of general counsels, uh, mostly in tech global companies, um, having a conference call about the, uh, you know, the legal ramifications and considerations and implications of opening businesses back up and all the things you need to be accounted for. Um, and I read this 24 page document and my head exploded because it was just all of the factors that had to be considered were so complex. Um, they're so kind of multifaceted in terms of the way you needed to think about reopening the business. And so I asked if I could open source that and he got permission um, from the general counsel. Yeah, God bless lawyers indeed. So they, uh, they think through all of this. Uh, I spent uh, probably six hours one night because not only that, the lawyers love PDFs. So if you've worked with PDFs and cloud documents, you can't even copy and paste those because the formatting is a disaster. So I spent six hours one night reformatting that entire document into a Google Docs friendly version um, so, that, uh, so that people could kind of see how they need to go about thinking about return to work. And then from there, um, Dashlane, this company up first, uh, you know, Dashlane's a uh, security company. They've got offices in Lisbon and Paris and New York. Um, and their uh, chief people officer, C.R. Lakani, opened up um, their framework. And so that then became the first open source framework. And then you can see from there, you know, Duolingo followed, uh, Casebook followed, Black Sheep Restaurants followed, um, SNCC uh, followed as well. And more and more companies started open sourcing their return to work plans, which again, this isn't something that any of us have really experienced, not at this level. And so, you know, we probably have ideas. And if you have seasoned, uh, you know, CISOs or HR leaders who have been through some natural disasters, that's probably the closest equivalence we've seen. Um, but there haven't really been scenarios like that that have caused us to overnight seemingly shut down our offices, shut down our economies, have everybody go work from home. Um, and then now think about how you open that back up and how you open that back up in an environment where um, we don't have a vaccine. We're not going to have a vaccine anytime soon. We have to maintain social distance if we're going to be back in a similar space. So you can't, uh, you know, if you're working in tech and, you know, tech loves those open, open office floor plans, can't do that anymore. You've got to be, you've got to keep your people a certain amount of distance apart. You've got to take away some of the amenities like bringing in food uh, in the cafeteria where it's getting employees to congregate uh, around food. So th there's so many aspects of this, but now this whole document has got um, you know, literally over a dozen resources specifically around return to work plans that can help you plan that. And that's because this all became open source. Um, the next thing I want to walk you through, and I'm not going to walk you through every aspect of this because uh, there's a lot here, but you can see here's how to use this document. So on the left hand side, you'll see the navigation. Here are all of the different uh, sections. So resources, HR business support, um, compensation arrangements, you know, remote work resources, um, scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, activities with kids at home. Um, how many of you are home with your kids who are not at school? Um, yeah, so, you know, we all talk about the shift to remote work as if we're in optimal, ideal remote work scenarios, right? Like, I, I, I laugh a little bit every time I hear, oh, we all just moved to remote work. Like, Remote work doesn't involve a house full of, of kids and pressures and the ability, you know, not having the ability to actually leave your home. Like this is, this is something different. Um, so uh, how, do you, how do you adjust to that? You know, most people have not experienced that as, as parents or employees. Um, and even getting more so, I think this piece is one thing that I do want to walk you through. And I don't know if you've seen these as much in Australia. Um, I've certainly seen those in the, these in the U.S. and in global, but for a lot of companies, you know, we've seen a lot of layoffs. Um, we've seen a lot of companies go through reductions and downsourcing. It's just the reality of this. Um, particularly in tech, as you can see from this list, 
Uh, a lot of companies uh, have created layoff lists for their impacted employees. Um, and I found that to be a really strong practice um, for those of you in HR and recruiting because, you know, when you're going through these reductions, obviously, whatever you can do to help your impacted employees, um, you know, land on their feet and, and land with minimal harm um, is, is a net positive for them. And so companies, you know, employees, they would allow their impacted employees to opt into this so they wouldn't just share their stuff. Um, but you can see, uh, you know, these are all uh, companies, many of them have laid off hundreds of people. I just added about an hour ago, Airbnb, uh, which, you know, Airbnb laid off 25% of their workforce yesterday, 1,900 employees. Um, and so they've already spun this up uh, in less than a day, which is amazing. And so for those of you that are actively recruiting, you have these goldmine lists from companies of, you know, really, you know, especially, I mean, Airbnb was, you know, they had a really high bar, you know, Lyft had a really high bar. It was not easy to get in those companies. So if you're working there, you can be pretty confident that they had some real talent um, who now are suddenly available. And so these layoff lists were a great way uh, to go through those. Um, and then the other piece here is just around, you know, companies that are hiring. So, you know, this is a document that I found really interesting. And to me, this uh, is really kind of the core of open source. Within a week, of uh, COVID really hitting the U.S. It probably came in about uh, ah, probably the third week in March. Um, somebody, and I say somebody, literally he, I tried, you know, uh, using my sourcing skills to stalk him. Um, I knew it was a, a guy. I was able to find that from the original thread on Reddit where this came from. But he took the time to curate and build a list of over 1,500 remote jobs from over 100 companies. Um, this was just a guy who thought, hey, we could probably use something like this. It doesn't exist. I'll build it. And that to me, that, that resourcefulness, that ingenuity um, that we're starting to see uh, of people who are, you know, in these, you know, we're in these weird times, somebody who identifies a need, you know, identifies that there isn't a resource out there to meet that need. So they decide to build it. Uh, and that's what this one person did right here with the over 1500 jobs. So that sort of thing is really amazing. I think that's where open source has come from. There's another group based out of New York um, called Life Labs Learning. Uh, and again, I definitely recommend, I'll send you the link to this. Um, but Life Labs Learning is a, um, uh, they're a training company for the most part. They work with a lot of startups and tech companies in New York. Um, but they, you know, similar to these organizations that have spun up these communities, um, they pulled all their members together uh, and started saying like, what do you need? What are you, what, what, what don't you have? What are you struggling with? How can we help? And through that created this, you know, masterful document. This one's way prettier than mine. So I have to give them props on, uh, on design. And as a design nerd, uh, you know, I, I, I am stoked for them. They have, as you can see, I'll just scroll through this briefly. Um, and again, all these Google Docs have these built-in table of contents on the side. You can see all of the resources um, that are here. And these were all generated by people like you. You know, HR practitioners, um, recruiting practitioners, talent practitioners coming together saying, hey, let's talk about it. how are you doing X? How are you doing Y? Cool. Let's build a document and share that with others so they can see how to do that. Uh, and that really at its core is, is open source. Um, there's two more things I want to show you, but I want to just quickly uh, just pause there for a moment. And just see based on kind of what we've walked through so far or maybe thoughts that that's triggered for you. Um, any questions, anything else? Like I'm curious in the chat window, like for those of you that are uh, leveraging resources to help you guide either your return to work programs or anything related to how your business is adjusting COVID, um, what's your favorite resource? Uh, I'd love everybody to just jump in chat and share like the, the favorite resources that you found most valuable during these times. Um, Yes. So a uh, question actually, as you're letting me know about that was, uh, uh, are the lists searchable? Most of them are. Um, they're built in different ways. So a lot of them are built on spreadsheets. Um, so for example, let me just jump back over here. I'll show you the Airbnb one. So the Airbnb one, uh, a lot of these things are built in Google Docs. Uh, the Airbnb one was built in Coda, which if you're not familiar with Coda, it's like Google Docs on steroids. Uh, and when I show you this list, you'll see why. Uh, but you can buy what are really more of like micro websites as opposed to just core spreadsheets. So again, here's the Airbnb list. Um, you can search by keyword. You can search by department. You can search by region. Um, 
you know, it does a breakdown, a functional breakdown on uh, where the employees that are here come from. And boom, you know, you get into tags to LinkedIn, you know, email, where they're located. Just amazing. Again, this is Coda. Coda has incredible functionality, but it's all right here. Um, this is probably the best one I've seen. So, you know, I'm loading this a little bit by showing you this first to get you all excited. This is this functionality wise because they're using Coda. Um, by far the best one I've seen, but I'll jump over to another one, you know, Lyft. So Lyft, again, using straight Google Docs. Um, here they have multiple tabs. So, um, you know, you can get over, for example, you know, people, ops and talent. Uh, boom, and you have a list. They all have the LinkedIn profiles. They have their emails. So this is all talent available now um, who work for some of the, you know, leading companies in tech. Um, and again, I say tech, a lot of these are updated. Um, how do they keep these updated? These are usually built um, by uh, the people departments within the organizations. Um, and they're not necessarily something that, that needs to be because all the data uh, around like where you live, your LinkedIn profile, your email, um, that's all pretty much static. You know, once you build it and put it out in the wild, it doesn't really require uh, a lot of updating. Uh, an employee, once they do get an offer and they're off the market, um, they might take themselves off if they don't want to be contacted anymore about roles. Maybe they don't. Maybe, you know, they're, hey, I'll continue to listen to opportunities. But um, because of the type of content, you know, former job title, location where they work, locations they're open to, et cetera, et cetera, all that data is static. So basically, um, they'll collect all that data in a, in a one-time, um, you know, effort. Then they'll create the doc and they'll publish the doc. Uh, and then once that's open, you know, anybody can access it and they can see it and the stuff doesn't really need to be kept current because people aren't changing things like their, you know, LinkedIn profile URL um, or their former job title, uh, et cetera. So um, again, for any of you in practitioner roles who, you know, might be in organizations that are faced with layoffs, um, you know, this is definitely something that I would consider um, because again, I think it's, it's an easy way to quickly amplify all of your impacted employees and get them out. And what I've seen is, um, there's a big appetite uh, in just the general populace to amplify these lists um, because people want to help other people. They, they, want, you know, they want these people to be able to land on their feet. So uh, definitely worth using. Um, quick question from Hugh here. We've got, are you seeing mainly identical themes across the return to work policies you've read? I'm assuming key themes uh, for the same for the majority of businesses. Um, yeah, I am for the most part. I think most companies are taking a phased uh, approach to this. And in some ways they mirror the local uh, um, you know, government or local regions um, policies around, you know, we have to hit X, Y, and Z mile, milestone before we get to phase one. Uh, and at that point, we have to hit, you know, the next three milestones before we can get to phase two. And so they're tiering their return to work plans with those local, um, you know, uh, uh, government kind of oversight plans. Um, and so, yeah, that, that trend is something that I have seen across all of these return to work plans because you can't just open things back up. You can't go back to the way things were. Um, I mean, on many levels, you can't do that. You can, I mean, it's just not possible. And so uh, what this does is it gives you, um, they prompt you on the, you know, the safeguards you need in place. You have to have masks, you have to have hand sanitizer. Um, you have to check temperatures. Uh, you know, there's just, it's, it's a lot. You know, there was a, a, an article in Fast Company uh, and sadly I, I couldn't find the URL, but I read it a couple of weeks ago. Um, actually, a couple of days ago, sorry. Uh, it was a guy in, uh, in China who went back to work in Shanghai uh, and he was an architect and he just talked about one day of going back into the office and all the things that he had to go through and the temperature checks and, you know, he was wearing a mask and the mask broke. Now he had no mask and he's freaking out. He's in the office. He's got no mask. They can't have the AC on because they can't recirculate the air. Um, because that's, that's been shown to help the, you know, the virus spread if somebody is infected. So there's no AC, you know, the windows are open. It's hot. It's miserable. Um, so yeah, fun, fun times for uh, HR practitioners figuring out how the hell we do that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's just the reality that we're in. This is going to be weird. It's going to be weird for a while. Um, the last quick thing I want to share with you, um, and then also happy to answer any questions uh, before we wrap up. So as we think about things like return to work, we're also thinking about like, what happens now? What happens next? And for me, you know, I started thinking about, you know, is this an opportunity in some ways to kind of reinvent work, right? I think when you look at the evolution of HR, 
uh, you know, our evolution has always been pretty incremental, right? We, we, we added this thing and it just tweaked our process a little bit. Then we added this thing and it tweaked our process a little bit more. Um, and so it's been iterative. It's been pretty slow. Um, there's pockets where they're like, nope, we're going to throw the whole playbook away and build something entirely new. That's been existing for a little while. Um, and so I kind of, I'm, I'm working on my next story for Fast Company around how this might be an opportunity for, you know, HR and people teams to essentially reinvent work. Um, and I reached out to my network to see, like, what are you seeing? Uh, what ideas do you have? Like, if you were building HR from the ground up today, you know, what would it look like? And uh, again, that happened on Monday. You know, here we are Thursday. And I got over, you know, 40 responses um, from my network of people um, with suggestions on how they'd approach that. So again, in the spirit of open source, I took all of those, like these are essentially comments on a LinkedIn post or a Facebook post. Um, I took all of them, I categorized them by topic, um, you know, I attributed them by the, by the uh, person who you know, made the recommendation and then essentially open source that and encouraged everybody else to add their own thoughts to it. Um, because I really, what I wanted this to do is be, uh, become kind of an idea board for the HR and people ops function um, for us to be able to kind of look at this and say like, um, you know, if this is an opportunity for us to rethink how we look about benefits or how we think about teams and measuring performance and some of the core things that we do in HR, what might we do differently, right? If we, if we just started with a blank sheet of paper. And so, you know, that's essentially what this is. And this is continuing to evolve. But again, it's this idea of someone will spark an idea, they'll spark a conversation, and then they'll create a platform, which, you know, Google Docs are great for this, um, that allow everybody to weigh in, you know, globally. So you're able to get varied perspective, varied ideas. And, um, you know, this is already getting picked up by places like IDEO, um, who are trying to apply design thinking to create kind of the next generation of work. So it's, um, it's really interesting to see how these things can take off. Uh, and again, wherever you are in the world, um, you know, the internet makes the world flat. You can easily open documents up like this and, and get people all over the world um, to weigh in with their expertise. And that just broadens your ability to, um, you know, A, make an impact, but B, have an understanding that goes much deeper than what you might have just within your own local confines. So, um, you know, with that, I want to just, uh, that's, those are the core things I wanted to, to show you. Um, when, uh, when I turn this back over to Ian, I'm just going to quickly copy paste all these links into the chat window so you have access to all those. Um, but again, they're all free, open documents, use them however you want, share them, um, you know, whatever, whatever you need to do. That's the whole aim of open source. So um, any questions for me before we uh, turn this back over to Ian? I'll awkwardly look at the camera for a moment as I look at the chat window and see if, uh, if we get any more questions. Any questions, folks? I think that, that, that was amazing. Um, there is a there is a there is a real pot of gold there. I think uh, Lars, for folks who are going to be able to use that, um, you're going to put all those details into the chat room, and then obviously, if you also want to send them to me, um, we can um, can forward that to the community here as well. Yeah, that sounds great. What I'll do, Ian, just to make it easy, I'll send you an email. Yes. Um, yes. With all the links, just so they're clean. As you see, like Google Doc links are uh, anything but clean, and they get uh, ugly. So I've created Bitly links for the Google Docs just to make that a little cleaner. So I'll send you a quick email now. Um, but just a summary of all those links and you can distribute that however you want. Fantastic. Um, folks, any further questions? You've got one minute. For, speak now or forever. Hold your peace. <laughs> um, Lars, thank you so much, mate, for joining us your evening on Thursday. Back in time. If you want to know what's happening coming forward, just let us know. We can, we can give you a little insight into the future. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any suggestions or thoughts, about Lars' session or any other things that you would like to see, please let me know. Um, have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. And again, thanks, Lars, for joining us. It was a, a real pleasure. And thanks for sharing all that information with us. Yeah, thanks for having me in. And uh, thanks to everybody who joined us. And uh, good luck, especially for those of you in roles that are kind of developing your plans. Um, wishing the best. And I hope these resources are helpful. Cheers, man. Stay well. Thank you, everyone. Stay well. All right. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.